your Jewish background and your faith in Jesus as a Christian with a Jewish background is actually the fulfillment of a millennia old promise he made to our forefathers to reconcile us to him through faith in one who was to come, a Messiah, and is actually the fulfillment of a calling that we, the Jewish people, are supposed to be a blessing to all the families of the earth when we share salvation and redemption and reconciliation with God with those around us. Welcome to A Jew and a Gentile Discuss. I'm your co-host, Carly Berna. And I'm Ezra Benjamin. We're a Jew and a Gentile who both believe in Jesus and believe that there's value in looking at history as well as today's world in the headlines through both a Jewish and Christian lens. Today we're going to talk about one of the questions we get the most, which has to do with having a Jewish background. Let's discuss. So Ezra, we get a lot of questions written to us, and we often get the question, from Christians who basically say, help, I'm a Christian with a Jewish background. What do I do? They're not sure who to talk to, what to do, what this means for their identity. And they're basically asking, now what? So let's start with, you know, that 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 phrase, I'm a Christian with a Jewish background. What does it mean to have a Jewish background? Yeah, it's a great question, Carly, and I'm going to give a Jewish answer. It means several things. Uh, there's never one answer. But yeah, you know, we've we've gotten emails, we've been contacted on social media. And thank you, by the way, to our listening audience who writes in with questions or comments. Thank you to those of you who said, look, I'm I'm in the Christian world. I'm very happy in the church, but I have Jewish ancestry, Jewish background. My family's Jewish. I'm not really sure what to do about that. And I can empathize with you that uh, it can be confusing. It can be exciting but it can also be kind of a feeling of shame. Like if I believe in Jesus, have I betrayed my Jewish heritage and my Jewish family who doesn't believe in him? Where do I fit? Do I fit in the Jewish world, the Christian world, both, neither? Is there something else for me? Uh, It can be, it can be angsty. Let me just acknowledge that uh, to those who are listening, who relate to what we're saying and to those who are listening, who uh, like many of our audience are just trying to uh, kind of get a, a more multifaceted perspective on uh, who makes up the body of followers of Jesus, of believers around the world, uh, Jewish and Gentile alike, and what's God want to do with all of us together? So to try to answer that question, Carly, what does it mean to have a Jewish background? First of all, you and I, here it is, you and a Gentile discuss, are not the world's foremost authorities, nor do we claim to be on how to define a Jewish person or Judaism uh, or who's Jewish or who isn't. That's not our purpose today, but we're going to try kind of at a high level to identify three groups that we could include in this idea of a Jewish background. So not exhaustive, but maybe you're listening at home and either you are relating to one of these three groups or you have a friend or somebody at your church or congregation who is. So the first, kind of the widest net we can cast, is this idea of Jewish ancestry. And this has become, I think, a lot more popular in the last 20 years or so as DNA tests have gone from kind of this mysterious thing that only happens in crime labs to something you can order online. Uh, or buy at Target and have the results back in a couple days. So as this has become more popular, this idea of Jewish ancestry, also like I I think the internet has really helped with this now. There's so many websites, many of which are related to people who died in the Holocaust, so family members can find out whatever happened to, you know, great-grandmother or grandfather so-and-so who used to live in Europe. But between the internet and between DNA tests, more and more people are discovering that they have Jewish ancestry. So for example, you know, you take a DNA test and it comes back from the lab and you find out that you are one 32nd Jewish. And then what does that mean, right? Like if you say you're one 16th Irish, people go, yeah, I'm part Irish. Or if you're, you know, one eighth Native American, you say, well, yeah, I have a Native American background. So Do I now start saying like I'm part Jewish and what do I do with that? We want to speak to that group today, the idea of Jewish ancestry, either way back in the family tree or something that a DNA test reveals. Um, More on that in a few minutes. The second group, narrowing it down a little bit, is actually the way that the state of Israel would define uh, who can come live there and be a citizen. What do we mean by that? Well, Um, The founding fathers of the state of Israel around 1947, 1948 had to draw up documents for this new nation. And one of the questions was who gets to immigrate here to the Jewish state and receive full citizenship and full rights. And so they actually kind of, uh, it's it's a little bit sad, but uh, by necessity at the time, they defined people who had the rights to come and be citizens in the Jewish state according to the same way as the Nazis defined people who should be considered Jewish and exterminated. 
And the way they did that was anybody who had at least one Jewish grandparent. So by process of, you know, uh, of elimination, if you will, if you have a Jewish parent, then you obviously have a Jewish grandparent. So at least one Jewish grandparent or closer to yourself on the family tree, um, one or more would give you the right to become a citizen in Israel, either as a Jew or as what's called the descendant of a Jew. And so how do we apply that to now? Well, nobody really knew. The state of Israel now is millions of people who have fit into that description uh, and come from all over the world. But what does that have to do with you know the North American Jewish community? Well, a few years ago, um, the Pew Foundation did a, uh, did a, conducted a survey related to the church in North America, right? Or the church in America, more specifically. And by church, they meant evangelical, Catholic, Presbyterian, charismatic, traditional, mainline, whatever. Anybody, in essence, who called themselves uh, Christian in America. And by extrapolation, they found something very interesting that actually blew my own assumptions out of the water. And it was that as many as 945,000 American Christians have at least one Jewish grandparent. So the minority of these people refer to themselves as Jewish. But according to the state of Israel, they might have an opportunity to come there and be full-fledged Israeli citizens with all the rights as the descendant of a Jew or a Jewish person. 945, almost a million people in the American church. So maybe you're one of those 945,000 listening today, and this podcast is for you as well. Uh, Jewish parent, Jewish grandparent, never really practiced it in your home. Maybe never it was never spoken about, but you're trying to grapple with what does that mean for me as, as a believer in Jesus, as a Christian. And then the third group, and this kind of relates to my story, which I'm sharing uh, in a week or so, Carly, on another podcast episode, is one or more of your parents is Jewish, and you practiced some form of Jewish faith in your home during the holidays, you know, family, uh, whatever it was, but either through a personal faith experience on your own, or one of your parents was Christian, and you kind of, you know, identified more with them, whatever the story is, and we all have our story, uh, you've ended up in a church where you're very happy and probably share the same beliefs as that church. Uh, but in your own personal background, Judaism was practiced, or you have some familiarity with the Jewish faith. And you're saying, well, what do I do now? How do I reconcile these two worlds that most of what I hear, both in the Christian community and the Jewish community, is these are irreconcilable. You're one or the other. So uh, we're speaking to you as well. So those are kind of the three ways, Carly, that we're defining Jewish background. So as of that third uh, bucket you talked about, you said you put yourself in, but would you define yourself as a Christian with a Jewish background? Great question. You know, in university, I did. I was class of 2004 in college to, to kind of quasi reveal my age right now. And at the time, I did. Not because I didn't identify with my Jewish family or my Jewish heritage, but it was just easier. Like I was just trying to figure out what it meant to be a fully committed follower of Jesus as, you know, a 20 year old, a 21 year old. And my Jewish identity was at best back burner until the Lord brought it front burner again during kind of this unique post-graduation season when everything kind of fell apart and had to be rebuilt. More on that when I share my story. But if anybody in college would have asked, sure, I would have said, yeah, I'm a Christian because that's what I believe. I believe like Christians. And sure, I have a Jewish background. And then I'd try to like quickly change the subject so that they didn't ask anything deeper because I didn't have the answers. So maybe you're relating whether you're in university, whether you're a young adult, whether you're 30 something, 40 something plus, maybe that's where you're at, right? You you kind of when somebody asks about your Jewish background, you somewhat uncomfortably acknowledge it, but emphasize so that you make sure you're not misunderstood, but I'm still a Christian. I still believe in Jesus and then change the subject. We want to try to speak to that a bit today and maybe give you some tools for understanding your own identity. In a, in a fuller way, or at least help you ask the right questions. Yeah, I can imagine, uh, you know, finding out that you have a Jewish background as a Christian is quite an identity crisis. You think you've been a Christian this whole time, now all of a sudden you're Jewish. You know, it, it, how would you speak to someone who's figuring that out? Yeah, you know, it, there isn't necessarily a right answer. Our purpose today, Carly, on the podcast isn't just to say this is the way you should think about it. What I do know to be true for myself and for people around me who are also Jewish believers in Jesus or some would identify themselves to this day as Christians with a Jewish background, asking God to show you the fullness of his truth and his plans and his intent as it relates to your faith in him as a person, as a man or woman with Jewish heritage, he's going to do that because we believe it's a priority to him 
for you to really understand who you are for all of us, Jewish or Gentile, right? Who are we? Where do we come from? What's unique to my story? And how has God allowed those uniquenesses in my story to affect who I am and what he wants to use me to do in the world? So that's my best advice. Spoiler alert is we want to give you some questions you can ask, either ask the Lord, ask yourself, ask your family, ask your community, um, but just ask him to, to show you the right way forward. And that's going to look different. There isn't, you know, we're not uh, a podcast or, or, or uh, a group of people that says this is the right way. And if you don't do this, you're in disobedience. That's not where we're at. We just, you know, we can share our own stories and uh, share some of the questions that helped us understand the way forward. So Ezra, I'm obviously a Christian. And at this point in time, I, I don't know if I have a Jewish background, but I don't think I do. But if I found out that I had a Jewish background, probably one of the questions I would ask is, okay, I've already, you know, proclaimed Jesus as my savior. Why does it matter if I have a Jewish background? Great question, Carly. Um, and let, let me be clear. Let us be clear, because I know you'll agree with this. Like in terms of one of the most, if not, we can say the most important decision we're ever going to make in life, right, is who am I in terms of how I was created by God and what happens after I die, to borrow some language from our friend Jonathan Burnus, right? Why am I here and what happens after I die? And we understand, Jewish believer, Gentile believer in Jesus, that the most important thing is the reality that I'm separated from God because of my sin, that he's made a way through Jesus, Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah and the Savior of the world for us to be reconciled to him and that by faith in him, we have the security and the confidence that our sins are forgiven, that we're reconciled to him, and that we uh, have eternity with him to look forward to. That, that's a fantastic thing. That's the most important thing. And so our audience may be saying, well, yeah, of course, that's the most important thing. Duh, that's the most important thing. Salvation is what it's all about. If you're, if you're a believer in Jesus, why does your background or heritage matter? Especially, more specifically, why does Jewish heritage matter if you already received Jesus? So a couple answers there. Um, First of all, this idea, and I'm, I'm taking this language, it's not kind of Ezra's great idea, it's actually uh, Paul's great idea from Romans 11, 29. And you're, if, you're, if you've read the New Testament you know, a couple times or more, you're familiar with this language. Paul says, for the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable, right? And so we expand that. Maybe you've heard a sermon on this, right? The idea that if I have you know, gifts in the Holy Spirit or special skills that God's given to me, or or I'm called to such and such ministry or to such and such people group in the world, or God's called me to do this, that it's irrevocable. Amen. And we believe that. That's not untrue, but it's important here to look at the context in which Paul is saying this. The context here was Paul trying to explain to the Romans, to a predominantly non-Jewish audience of believers in him, what in the heck God was doing with the Jewish people who by and large through those first few decades since Jesus resurrection from the dead and ascension to heaven had rejected the gospel and actually become enemies of it. What is God doing preserving a Jewish people and still planning blessing and good and salvation for them? And that's the context where Paul says, even though the Jewish people to this day, and we can say now in 2020, to this day, by and large, have rejected the gospel, have rejected the good news of the Messiahship of Jesus, the gifts and the calling of God in the context there on the Jewish people, on Israel, are irrevocable. And what is what are those gifts and calling? Go all the way back to Genesis 3 and Genesis 11 and 12. Uh, Adam and Eve are separated from God because of sin, and God, right in, the, in Genesis chapter 3, is talking about how that sin problem is going to be overcome. Satan, the enemy, is going to bruise the heel of the woman, but she and her descendants, her seed, will crush the head of the enemy. Satan will be crushed under one who is to come from Eve. And then we fast forward a few chapters in Genesis and see Abraham and Abraham's son Isaac, not Ishmael, and then Isaac's son Jacob, not Esau, this specific line of descendants which become the Jewish people, the 12 sons, 12 tribes of Jacob or Israel, uh, are the ones who carry this promise uh, to bring forth the Messiah, Jesus, but also through faith in him to fulfill what was promised to Abraham, that the Jewish people, the descendants of his descendants, would be a blessing to all the families of the earth. So what does that have to do with you, the Christian with a Jewish background, listening at home today? Consider, I want to I want to ask you to consider for a moment that perhaps you're not just one person among many that God is somehow randomly bringing to faith in him because he wants sons and daughters, but that your Jewish background and your faith in Jesus 
as a Christian with a Jewish background is actually the fulfillment of a millennia old promise he made to our forefathers to reconcile us to him through faith in one who was to come, a Messiah, who would crush Satan, who would crush the head of the enemy, and is actually the fulfillment of a calling that we, the Jewish people, are supposed to be a blessing to all the families of the earth. And how are we most a blessing? When we share salvation and redemption and reconciliation with God, with those around us. So uh, your Jewish identity matters as a believer because the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Chew on that. If you don't believe me, look at our friend uh, Paul in Romans and beyond. He has a lot to say about the plan and heart of God for the Jewish people. Secondly, Carly, something we talk about a lot on this podcast on the other episodes is this idea that Jewish believers in Jesus or Christians with a Jewish background actually aren't converting to Christianity, so to speak. They're not leaving a Jewish identity to embrace a Christian one. And maybe if you're a Christian with a Jewish background, somebody told you, maybe a pastor, maybe a leader, maybe when you came to faith, or maybe even your family members said, we were Jewish, but now we're Christian. We used to be Jewish, but now I believe in Jesus. And I want to just challenge that. We want to challenge that a bit today and ask you to consider that perhaps faith in Jesus, who said, I've come first for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, may be a fulfillment of our Jewish identity and not a departure from it. That you actually may be receiving the full intent and heart of God for your Jewish background rather than converting away from it to some new religion uh, that Jesus somehow founded. Jesus said, you know, I haven't come to abolish the law, I've come to fulfill it. He was fulfilling and he is to this day fulfilling the Jewish faith Because ultimately, it's about redemption of mankind and redemption of men from their sins back to right relationship with God. Christians are invited into that, right? The idea of wild branches being grafted back into the olive tree. But who's the olive tree? It's Jewish people. It's this house of Israel. And the heart of God was always that we knew Jesus, the promised Messiah. So a fulfillment rather than a departure. And then the third thing, um, in terms of why does my Jewish identity matter if I'm a believer in Jesus already, is this idea, you know, uh, I I went to um, Auschwitz and then I went to Treblinka uh, in Poland uh, in the last couple of years, just kind of on a tour, Carly. And walking out of there, I remember feeling a lot of grief for what had happened there because some of my family members three generations ago uh, went there and never came out. You know, they were they were uh, exterminated there under the Nazi regime. But I also remember thinking I get to walk out. And if my ancestors today from their graves could actually tell me what they want to tell me, now having encountered eternity, what would they want me to know? And what would I want to tell them? And this idea in Hebrew, you'll see it if you go to Israel, you see it kind of spray painted everywhere. It's Am Israel Chai, and that means the people of Israel live. And uh, a famous Bible scholar, you know, uh, over a century ago, people said, prove to us that God exists. You know, these kind of skeptics came to him, prove to us, sir, that God exists. And he said one thing. He said, I have one answer for you. The Jews, my friend, the Jews. What do I mean by that? The preservation, the miraculous existence of the Jewish people today, Carly, against all odds, against uh, extermination attempt after extermination attempt, against uh, the Greeks and the Romans and the Nazis, you know, and then Haman in the Bible and the story of Esther. All of these things, and yet we live. And yet, Am Israel Chai, the Jewish people live to this day. You, a Christian with a Jewish background, are a living testimony to the faithfulness of God who said, though my people reject me, I will be found faithful to preserve a remnant. And the idea there is, if God said, I've had it with the Jewish people, or somehow we all died off and there was no more Jewish people, well, how do we know that God is able to keep any of his other promises? So your existence as however you define yourself, a a Christian with a Jewish background, a Jewish believer, somebody with Jewish heritage, your existence and the existence of your family against all odds is a testimony to the faithfulness of God. And that's part of why it matters too. And maybe you're listening and something kind of is, is awakening or reawakening in you as you hear that. That may be God. You know, I'm not, you take this podcast and consider it, maybe listen to it again, pray about it, but consider that your identity is more than just a heritage. It's a living testimony to the faithfulness of God. Yeah, that's great context. And if you are listening and you're a Christian with a Jewish background, tell us, go to our website, a Jew and Gentile discuss.org and let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, I also want to just speak to anyone who's a Christian that doesn't have a Jewish background 
you might be wondering, you know, why should I keep listening to this podcast? It doesn't apply to me. It's important for you to understand um, how this would apply to a Christian that does have a Jewish background. Say you have a friend who's in this situation, you can speak to them and explain the, this importance, as well as if you just know someone um, who's Jewish who doesn't believe in Jesus, just that understanding of that it's a fulfillment and not a departure from their Jewish heritage is important. Uh, so continuing, continue to listen to gain that understanding so you can better speak uh, to your Jewish friends or family. So we've spent, you know, the last 15 minutes or so talking kind of this philosophy of identity, Jewish and Christian heritage, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about the practicalities of what this means. But before we do that, um, I want to just mention one thing. If you've listened to this podcast before, you hear us talk about coffee all the time. One, you hear as you're drinking it. Two, us talking about um, how we have this coffee offer. But uh, what we want to do today is allow you the opportunity to get a free bag of coffee. You can actually text us. Uh, if you text JG, J for Jew, G for Gentile, to 474747, you can enter for a monthly coffee giveaway. And you can actually enter every month um, totally free, just text JG to 474747, and then we'll let you know who wins the bag of coffee. It'll be sent to you. You can try it. It's directly from uh, Ethiopia, which is one of uh, the countries that we go to and share the gospel with Jewish people. Uh, so if you're interested, um, text JG to 474747, just a way for you to uh, get involved and also hopefully win some free coffee. So switching back to uh, this idea of I'm a Christian with a Jewish background, back to the practicalities part of it. Ezra, if someone finds this out, who should they share it with? Yeah, another good question. And that's going to be very circumstantial to the to the community that you have. You know, um, I think definitely, let me say, share it with people you trust. Um, so a couple categories real quick. And in my own story that I'm going to share shortly on this uh, on, a, on an upcoming episode of the podcast, uh, you'll hear my journey of trying to begin to talk again about my Jewish background and my Jewish identity, actually, as a young adult, and kind of what was good about that and what was really difficult about that, uh, and the good responses I got and the weird or even hostile responses I got, believe it or not, at, at points. So we can't promise it's all going to come up rosy. If you're a Christian with a Jewish background and you say, you know what, I feel like I need to start processing this more than just in my own mind. So uh, a couple options. One is, you know, our Jewish identity uh, generally comes to us from our Jewish family, either ancestors or uh, more recently, parents, grandparents, etc. So definitely in terms of understanding more about who your family is, understanding more of the Jewish identity, if it's not been spoken of much, I'd encourage you to begin to have those conversations. Giant asterisk here guys listening at home, for Christians with a Jewish background, people probably, okay, this is my big assumption, I could be wrong, people probably in your family have been more comfortable with you identifying as a Christian than for you beginning to dabble in the muddy waters of, well, yeah, I believe in Jesus and I have a Jewish background, help me understand that because it's difficult. And because as we said earlier in the podcast, there's so much pressure now. That's one of the reasons actually, Carly, our podcast exists is because there's so much pressure to completely surgically separate the Christian world and the Jewish world and say the Jews have their faith and the Christians have theirs. We can all be friendly from across the aisle, but never the two shall meet. And we're trying to challenge that but now you, as a Christian with a Jewish background, by your own identity, are going to have to start challenging that. And it's not easy. Let me just say that. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Because if there's something more about how God created you that he wants to use in your life, either as part of your testimony or part of what he's got for you to do in the future, wouldn't you want to know? Even if it's hard, wouldn't you want to know? So I just want to appeal to you on that level. So begin to talk with your family. Family members who are believers uh, would be a great place to start. If you have those, uh, that's a blessing. I have one or two in my extended family. It's a blessing to talk with them. Uh, if you don't, 
then just explore what you can about the Jewish background, Jewish heritage. Uh, if there's pictures, stories, names, uh, begin to look into that just so you understand what does it mean more than just generically. Yeah, we're Jewish, but well, who? What country did you come from? What's the story? What were their names? What was their belief? What values did the grandparents pass down to their parents? And if you're feeling so inclined uh, and are particularly bold after six cups of coffee, like I occasionally am, ask them at what point, if, if Jewish identity hasn't really been spoken of much in your home, explore that a bit. Hey, I know, I know we come from a Jewish background. I know we didn't talk about that a lot when I was growing up. Can you talk about it now? Is there something that happened? What, you know, what makes it a bit uncomfortable, mom? What makes it a bit weird, dad? It's, it's a touchy conversation, but I'd encourage you to begin to have it. I hope you don't get shut down. If you do, don't worry. It's not the end of the road. So talking to family is good. Also, like, right, as believers in our in our communities, where do we go? Well, we go to our congregational leaders, to elders, pastors. Definitely, that's a great option too, Carly. Um, the challenge there is that our spiritual leaders are going to respond to this issue through their own theological worldview, which if they kind of understand, if you will, from an Old Testament and a New Testament perspective, what is God's heart and intention for the Jewish people, you know, in terms of ultimately, of course, us coming to faith in Jesus, but this idea of the Jewish identity being an enduring one, even as believers, that can be a great conversation. When I started to process this at the church I was going to at the time in, in Chicago and awesome church, they loved God, uh, the presence of the Lord was there during worship, and they didn't have a clue what to do when I started talking about my Jewish identity, because in the theology of that particular place, the church had replaced Israel. Like Israel was somewhat irrelevant other than a historical example of what not to do. So that wasn't positive and I had to go elsewhere. But I'd say begin to explore that with your church, uh, pastor, elders, people who you look to for kind of spiritual uh, mentorship in the community you're in. That's a great option. Also talking to friends. Believe it or not, friends may be the best place because friends are going to love you where you're at, even if they don't understand. And the way, as a Christian with a Jewish background, you may want to start talking about this issue. Maybe it's not going to come out right. Don't worry about that. Maybe you're not going to have the terminology you want. Maybe you're going to burst into tears because it's a subject of tremendous uh, angst or shame for you for whatever reason. Like that, you're not the only one who feels that way. Go there with people who love you and you love them who are trusted and just begin to explore it. If anything, just get your questions out on the table. Um, and write them down. And friends are a, ga a great place to talk to about that. Also, uh, you know, not not self promotion here, but uh, Carly, we both you from a from a Christian perspective, engaging in you know, God, trying to understand what God's up to with the Jewish people. And me as a Jewish believer, uh, with one Jewish parent and one Christian parent, kind of struggling through this for my whole life. Uh, we want to be a resource to you as well. So again, don't hesitate. We said it at the beginning of the podcast. We'll say it again. Don't hesitate to reach out to us online, to write in. Even if all you can say is, uh, hey, I'm a Christian and one of my grandparents is Jewish or my father's Jewish, and I have no idea what to do about that, great place to start the dialogue. And you know, there's some communities of Jewish believers in Jesus in many cities, Carly, small cities, big cities around the uh, around the country. And if we're able to, we'd love to get you in touch with some people locally as well. Just go have a coffee with them, explain where you're at. Uh, if you're not comfortable doing that, talk to us. Uh, no pressure. We'd just love to know, you know who you are and what questions you have, and we'll try to answer them either uh, directly to you or in a future podcast. So uh, there's some options, but I, I will say it's not easy. It's a, it's a hairy subject often difficult to talk about and difficult for people to hear because they don't have a context often for where you're coming from. But I just want to encourage you, be courageous and broach the subject. So Carly, as let's, let's, let's use you for a moment as the sample, the exemplary Christian friend that one of our Christian listeners with a Jewish background is going to approach. Before you kind of got into the Jewish ministry world, how would you have understood what somebody was saying to you if they said, I think I'm Jewish, but I don't know what to do in terms of reconciling that with my faith in Jesus. And then now uh, understanding more about kind of the fullness of this topic, how would you relate to somebody in your church who said something like that to you today? Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't have the context, kind of like the church you explained, although I didn't believe in replacement theology. But about 10 years ago, um, when I was going to grad school, a friend of mine was in the Bible study that I was in, and she was always telling me that she was going 
to church on Saturdays and she was going to a Jewish congregation. And I was just so confused. I really, I really didn't understand. I didn't have just the knowledge to understand what she was doing. Now, looking back, she was definitely a Messianic Jewish believer, but I just was like, what is she Jewish? Why is she in my Bible study? Is she a Christian? I just, I really didn't know. And I wasn't curious enough to want to go to the Jewish congregation she was going to, because to me, it just seemed so far away from, um, you know, a Christian church. So I really didn't know. I actually still talk to her now. And so now we have very exciting conversations about Messianic Judaism because I have a much better context. Um, now, if someone would approach me to say that they were a Christian with a Jewish background, I would understand uh, much more how to guide them and and explain to them the importance of that and how it doesn't mean to leave their Jewish heritage and how, um, you know, God's role for the Jewish people, um, et cetera. But I think that's why it's so important that Christians understand that. Um, again, if you don't have a Jewish background, that's totally okay. But uh, you want to be able to understand how to support others in your Christian community who may have a Jewish background. Um, so that's why I think it's important to understand it either way. So Ezra, for those that, uh, again, are are in this situation, maybe they're wondering, you know, do I continue to go to my Christian church or do I have to go find some type of Messianic congregation what would you say to them? Yeah, you know, it's the answer is going to be different for everybody. In my story, uh, which I'll share in a couple of weeks, I was very happy at that church, but I felt like God was calling me to rejoin the Jewish community as a young adult, at the Jewish believing community. So I made the transition to a Messianic Jewish congregation where they worship Jesus in a Jewish way and celebrate the Jewish holidays, um, kind of Jewish style of of, of music and, and such. But I did that over a year and a half or two year period where I was kind of, it, my weekends were full because <laughs> Saturdays I was at the Messianic congregation and Sundays I was at the church and I loved both. And, you know, some people are going to fully embrace their Jewish identity, Carly, and fully remain committed to the church they're at because it's a good church and it's a great community. So I think the keys are where is there a healthy place that's worshiping Jesus in spirit and in truth and that offers you a healthy community that you can be a part of and contribute to. If that's the church, great. If that's a Messianic congregation, also great. And it doesn't have to be either or. So don't be, you know, for Christians with a Jewish heritage listening to this, don't be scared away in thinking somebody at some point is going to pressure you that you have to leave your church and your community and everything you know and go to this new place that seems odd. And even though it's your heritage, you really don't get most of what they're saying or doing. Nobody is or nobody should be forcing you to do that. Um, but Messianic congregations are a great place to start to, as young adults, as adults, explore, kind of reconnect to our heritage in a way that we can own it for ourselves. It's not just something our parents did or it's not some distant concept, but it's actually something we can begin to own. So um, Messianic congregations, if there's a healthy one in your area, are a great place to kind of, you know, go check it out. Go have coffee with the with the rabbi or the congregational leader and ask your questions. Is that the best place for a Christian with a Jewish background to find other people in this same situation? Generally, when you start to tell that story in America, other people in your small group, other people in your Bible study may have a similar story. Not always, but often, you know, I was talking to a, a, a guy at the church my wife and I have been going to for, for a few years. And, you know, it just seemed like the normal kind of uh, Scottsdale uh, Christian. And as we explore, you know, I started talking about my own Jewish background. He goes, yeah, my grandparents were Jews from Russia. Okay, well, that what does that make you? You know, and it, it, he kind of went, oh, well, I never thought of it. And he is not young. You know, he's probably 60 years old. He's not old, old, but in six decades, he hadn't ever faced it. So you telling your own story will help you find other people who maybe have a similar story. And Messianic congregations are going to be places where uh, generally there's either uh, a, a number of Jewish believers or a number of Christians who really have kind of embraced uh, a burden from the Lord for for what it means to be a Jewish believer, and they can be sensitive to you and your story. So we've talked to Christians who have a Jewish background, Christians who don't have a Jewish background. What about to the people who are kind of in between? They might be listening, they're a Christian, they think, maybe I have a Jewish heritage, my 
dad is from this country or my mom is from this country. I don't really know. I'm curious. How do I find out? What would, what advice would you give to them? Yeah. You know, people who feel like they're on the fence or in between two camps, let me say this. It can feel very alone because, right, all of us are really asking, where do I belong? Right? That's one of like the fundamental questions in our soul. Where do I belong? Where am I known? Who knows me? And who do I know? And when you say, okay, I kind of, I feel Jewish and I feel Christian. I believe in Jesus, but I have these family ties and tradition and culture. Where do I belong? It's not, it's not an either or. You can belong to your Jewish family and community as a Jewish person and belong to your Christian community as one who shares that most important faith in Jesus, in Yeshua. So don't let anybody paint you into a corner is my advice. People all through the years, and some were more successful than others. And at times when I you know, wasn't feeling great about myself or was confused about my own Jewish identity as a believer, you know, I let people paint me into corners. And so let me just, from my own experience, don't let anybody paint you into a corner and say, make your choice. Uh, it's a false choice. If we read the scriptures, we can see very clearly that the whole idea in the Jewish faith was salvation through a promised deliverer, a Messiah, a savior. Um, and so you as a Jewish believer are not kind of on a fence you can't come down from, but you're right in the middle where you belong. And as lonely a place as that can feel, you're not alone and there are others like you. So would you suggest that someone who's unsure get a DNA test? You know, it's a great tool to understand our background. Like even people, you know, I know very well that I, I, I you know, my father's entire side of the family is Jewish from Russia and from Belarus and, you know, Poland, but I still got the DNA test because I'm curious. Well, what else do I want to know? So it's never a bad thing. I think if you find out you're one thirty second Jewish again, you know, before you put on a kippah and, you know, a black suit and march down to the synagogue and announce your newfound Jewish identity, pause, explore what that might mean for you, get into, you know, find out more about your family history. But uh, that's a good step. And also just interviewing family. You know, if you if you have relatives who are kind of on the later side of life, uh, who you know have a Jewish story to tell, Jewish heritage, interview them so that that identity doesn't die with them. You know, unfortunately, for a number of reasons in our generation, Carly, like so often the Jewish identity of our parents was a non issue. And so it just wasn't discussed. But one of the things that's said in Judaism is, is Judaism is always one generation away from extinction, meaning if it's not passed down, from the parents to the kids, and the kids don't know about it, they won't pass it down ever, and then it's gone. So um, talking to family is great, getting a DNA test is great, and they're all great tools that you have. Nothing should be the deciding factor in how you live every day of the rest of your life, but they're all good tools. Yeah, that's good advice. And again, for those who are listening, we're happy to answer questions as well. Ezra and I read all the questions that come in, and we're happy to give any direction too. So thanks so much for listening today. We hope you got something out of this, no matter what camp you're in. One thing we just wanted to mention is if you like what you hear on these podcasts, we are fully supported by donations. So if you're able to, please give a donation on our website. It can be something small, as, as little as $5, a one-time gift. Or if you're able to commit to a monthly gift, you can join kind of our the Jew and a Gentile after show where... Uh, we'll give you behind the scenes information, uh, exclusive video content, other content that we're not putting on the podcast. So if you're able to join from a monthly donation standpoint, just to support continuing to listen to these podcasts, uh, please do so. And as we've mentioned on previous podcasts, we also have this opportunity that if you're able to give at a at a higher amount on a monthly level, uh, we'll send you our Ethiopian coffee, the Lost Tribes Coffee Co. Coffee is often as you'd like. Um, all that information you can get on a Jew and a Gentile discuss.org. Uh, so check that out. If you want to hear more episodes, you can subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts. As we've mentioned, we'd love to hear from you. Also share this podcast with someone you know who might be interested. You can follow us on social media. If there's any suggestions you have, you can submit them to us. Um, again, thanks so much for listening and join us next week for another episode. The show is a production of Jewish Voice Ministries International.